On this episode of the Soul's Quest podcast, Omar and I will become transparent and share the trials and lessons of our unfolding quest. Stay tuned. All right. So in the last episode, right, we talk about Pep, you know, the perspective, the experience, and the pr- philosophy of the hero's journey, right? And on, on this episode, um, which is kind of like an impromptu episode based on, on that idea, um, I think the intention of it is to kind of like share about our current journey, you know, how it's been unfolding, um, and talk about the, the trials, uh, talk about the, the the mentors and the guides that we have met along the way and and talk about the feelings associated with some uncertainties uncertainties you know that happen and all that um but also more than that is the um that i that pay, that, that perspective and that idea of how we are growing as individuals um throughout this um so that will be the intention of it you know is to share our story um, be candid as to how we how we individually and collectively are uh, progressing through our journey, through our quest. How does that sound? Sounds great. Sounds great. Take the lead. Take the lead. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's You said it's impromptu, so I'm not really sure what. Typically, I have a, a, a little kind of like, mm-hmm. mm, this is how we're going to, this is how this is going to flow. I have no idea. You yeah. made that pretty clear. We're yeah. going to just do we may not even stick to times. We're just going to, I am completely all yours right now okay. for God knows what. Yeah. I have no idea. You have so. no idea. No. Nope. Okay. So I'm going to, pers- I'm going to start, right. Mm-hmm. And kind of like take the last three years of our lives. Mm-hmm. Right. And talked about some of the aspirations that we had. Right. Um, some of the, the visions of what we had. Um, and then some of the trials that came with that. Um, so for me uh personally um i've uh throughout my life you know there were certain things that i wanted and i wasn't truly able to articulate what those things were you know so um for most of my life or at least to i was like in my 30s my late 30s right it was a journey to self-discovery, to explore things, you know, to explore what God was um, and how to relate it in my life, you know, to be heroic in my own way, to give back. So that's why I chose to work with young people um, for a long period of time, you know, and I did all the things to, um, to sustain ourselves financially. Um, nothing illegal, you know, but uh, just work. Um, But I always wanted more out of my life. So I decided to go into youth development to just help people, you know, and management was part of that and leading other people and doing those type of things, you know. Um, And I I had experience in the corporate world in sales and and that stuff, Um, but it wasn't fulfilling. Um, So I went into nonprofit thinking that that was going to be something that was much better. And it was actually... Um, the job itself, working with the young people was the best part of it, but the rest was really challenging, you know, um, there's, there's egotism, there's all kinds of stuff involved with that, you know, perceptions and ideas of what people should be. Um, and I met a lot of obstacles with a lot of different people and it kind of like ate at my self-esteem, you know, and I stood there because, because I, you know, um, and it just recently I've learned this that I have a lot of low self esteem because a lot of the challenges that I had in life, primarily when I was younger, and I didn't know exactly what way to go. You know, so the idea was to figure out to to be spiritual and figure out like a guidance as to which direction life should go, right? And you know, some there was a naivete to that, being very naive to it. Um, because I always felt like if you, you know, the universe will guide you and, and there's a truth to that. Right. Um, but I wasn't grounded a hundred percent on realism too either, you know? 
So there was a lesson that that was one of the first lessons that I had to learn within the last three years. That it's it's un, it's good to be thinking from that perspective, right, of the universal guidance and all that. But there's also a practicality of life that I wasn't really paying attention to. You know, case in point, my <coughs> finances, right? Um, I always did things out of heart. Um, money wasn't primarily the main motivator. Um, but even though it wasn't the main motivator, it needed to be an important aspect of how I did things, you know, what kind of work I chose. Um, and I failed to do that. Um, and, and it cost. It cost us time. It cost us uh, um, experiences because my life was primarily about making an impact and, and helping others, which is not a bad thing, but, you know, it... Um, there's a practicality that comes with it. And being in, in the nonprofit world and having experienced some really, really crappy things that I've seen, you know, place in which you're supposed to caring for other people, um, kind of like made me realize that, you know, and that was kind of like hard of an acceptance to take, right? Um, so as a consequence of all those experiences, you know, um, I decided to kind of like go and do something on my own, which is a source quest. Now, when I started, you know, a source quest, this idea, when I started out, I wasn't a hundred percent sure. I just wanted to share my opinion. And I did it for a couple of reasons. One is because I didn't have a really good time, um, in the way that I was treated in a way that I saw other people treated in one of my previous jobs, you know? Um, and I was like, I'm fucking show them, you know, treating me like a piece of crap, like nothing. And, you know, so you have a lot of those emotions coming up, right? And then, um, so I, I decided to go and do this on my own. But again, I was being naive because I wasn't 100% ready. I would give myself six months to be able to have something built, but without knowledge, without having to learn on the fly and all that stuff, it took a little bit more than I anticipated. I was being too optimistic about the whole situation. And what I wanted to see, like, I felt like, hey, God, you know, the universe is going to provide. Um, and although that was a really good thing, I, I mean, retrospect, looking back, um, that wasn't a very practical thing to do. Um, I learned a lot of lessons from it. You know, we're here, we'll be doing this consistently. Um, and I learned to do this all on my own primarily, right? Um, um, but it was a painful ride, you know? Or it's been a painful ride. Um, the, um, so that was one mistake that I made. Um, second big mistake that I made was when situations got financially tough, right? Um, and I, I needed to look for something else to do. I I made the mistake of going back to a nonprofit organization too. Um, and I saw crappy things in there too, you know, how people will talk somebody's people somebody's back and then they will do crappy stuff just to get people fired, you know? And it's like, it's like, to me, it was like reliving all these things and seeing that, that, um, you know, just, just, just seeing things that it was like, oh, this is, this is just reliving everything else, you know? And me being too opinionated or, or being whatever, you know, didn't get myself into the good graces. And, you know, and eventually I was let go just recently. You know, um, a part of me feel relieved, but a part of another part of me feel like, oh shit, <laughs> financially speaking, you know, this is going to be a challenge, right? And it's been challenging, um, because even though we have progressed in what the Soul Squares has become, you know, there are financial responsibilities that need to be addressed, right? Um, in the meantime, one of the, as, I, as I progressed, you know, I, I became the life coach, you know, I got my certification in life coaching. Um, I started expanding certain things, um, doing some public speaking, doing some presentations and stuff. Started doing that much more, more recently. Trainings. Trainings, you know, and that's something that feels like really good. And I'm, and I'm 
I've always done it, so it's it's it feels great to see that I'm having an impact on people, and that's kind of like the ultimate direction in which I would like to go, just empower people. But I will tell you that this journey has actually brought up a lot of things emotionally. Because when you're going through financial challenges, which we are going through, right? Um, and we are going through those things kind of like lead to a lot of emotional turmoils, you know, like not being able to sleep at night, um, not being able to to do certain things that you were used to do with no issues, right? Um, being able to like your pride, but more than anything, it's like the psychological effect of how it makes you feel, right? So I would argue that's worse than <laughs> the... Um I would argue that that's worse based on my experience. I don't want to take away from your um, time, but that that is more um, difficult than actual the, the financial challenges and the little nuances. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It is. Um, not to dismiss that because that's hard, but I think the psychological is the, really, really profound yeah. and, and disturbing sometimes. So the, so the psychological thing that came out, right, um, for me primarily, right, is that idea of abandonment and not being wanted right and i spoke to someone and about it and it's like you know my life story has been you know i was abandoned by my you know my my father when i was young Mm -hmm. um my my mom had to do what she had to do so i was left behind so and and that situation wasn't all that well um i never had a bond with uh, my I, I like a strong bond with like my stepfather. Um, like for instance, like, t- you know, like a talking to, it was always talking down to, um, like I've never felt wanted. Or I never felt like I belonged anywhere. Right. And when you, when you, when you're going through these things like that, in which people question your your talents, right? When people question whether or not you've been to school or you're educated, uh, when people question your professionalism, uh, when people question your decision making, um, and not even question it, not even sit down and talk about it, but just completely dismiss it, right? Um, when people just meet you and they say, "Who the hell do you think you are?" Um, I remember last time in my last position, you know, well, you were just this before. And I'm like, no, I wasn't just that before. I was this, this but it was just a condescending look, like the non-accepting, you're not good enough look, you know? Like, you know, people say, well, you might be making up, but you know what I'm talking about. And people know what I'm talking about. It's like that looking down upon type of look from that elitist standpoint. Um. And you some you could say well whatever you know but to me because of my past history is very traumatizing it's like it's very reliving it it's like it hurts at the core of who you are you know and I've noticed that there was a pattern in which that constantly kept happening in my life right until just it, it just kept happening coming across certain people like that you know I remember when Abraham left the Kabbalah Center in Miami we had that guy <coughs> coming in and he was I forgot what his name was me too. Um, but I remember him though. Yeah. Can't forget him. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was just terrible. You know, terrible. And it was like you really thought his shit didn't stink. It was really crazy. Yeah. And it was like we just it was you know we were like a family with everybody there. You know, and we weren't even Jewish or anything, but they just accepted us and we were part of the whole family. Mm-hmm. But every time the moment that he came in, it was just completely things something changed. Things just changed dramatically. And when you felt part of a family, all well, of a they, sudden they, you were he, he said. Mm-hmm. He said it. It wasn't that we thought it. It wasn't no, a perspective. It. it was said too. Yeah. And so for somebody to blatantly say, "You don't belong here." Yeah. Is that's that is traumatized. I mean, yeah. it, it traumatized me. I was like, "Geez, yeah. okay. Well, who who pissed in your oatmeal today?" Or yeah. your and it was plates? such a contrast, right? From like Abraham and yes. from Shimon, mm-hmm. it was such a different contrast, mm-hmm. and it was just like, "Wow, 
you know mm-hmm. and uh, yeah you put yourself in i mean you put yourself in a situation to learn something new and being out there but uh, it was just sh- shifted right and i see those different patterns in my life and then the the hard part right and this is kind of like when you go into the abyss of the hero's journey is that you realize you know when you should be it all alone you mm-hmm. know you should be did all the world right because because i feel most of the time very alone you shall be with all the world mm-hmm. yeah and again it's like and then what happened this weekend is i met with someone that that told me it's like you know I, i've lost everything you know, I lost my wife, I lost my businesses, I lost my houses, I lost everything. He was homeless. homeless. I was homeless, sleeping in my car. And and you have to le- learn to just let go. It's like just being, like dying and letting go. And I have a really hard time doing that, right? Which is what we just talked about in the yes. last episode, the mm-hmm. rebirth. The rebirth. And I'm having a hard time just letting go because I felt that I could have done so much more in my life, right? And I didn't. And I have to die to that perception, and it's hard. It's hard to to probably know. Uh, this is a little hard, right? That your kids don't look at you the same. You know? It's hard to... To know the colleagues or, or people that you know that you know probably don't look at you the same. Um, <coughs> it, it's hard to to admit ab- admit that you you made mistakes and you could have done things differently. It's hard to to struggle, right? To know that you want something, right? And know that, oh my God, I have to do whatever it takes right now to maintain my financial stability. So what I really want to do may have to go away and making those choices and then being able to be open-minded and letting go. (coughs) So like my struggle is a psychological struggle from the point of feeling abandoned, right? And being, and and making a, 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 a choice to really wanting to be an impactful person, right? Which is kind of like, the, you know, the heroic journey and all that stuff. To to what I feel was fulfilling work. And I'm not going to say that I was the best at it or anything, but I did the best that I could. And I tried to, to be inspirational, to be an example for kids in the way that I lived my life, Right? And just to know that it was discarded just like that by some people or dis- diminished to put put aside. It's like it hurts your core. You know, like it really does. You know, and it hurts more because, you know, I put you through a lot of stuff. Like I used to work a lot, right? And I used to come leave home early, come home really late, you know, and our marriage was in turmoil because my dedication to the movement, the cause, what the fuck ever it's called, right? <clears throat> um, I sacrificed a lot. And then the treatment and the reward of it, it the reward wasn't that it was just going to be money. It was just the reward was doing a good job and just being accepted but just to be diminished and to be just cast aside and looked down upon it, it hurt right and then I had to learn as part of this whole process of acceptance right that there's things that I could have done differently you know and this is what I had to learn not to be as vested you know, which I have a hard time with because it's like I'm the type of person that if like if I want, if I'm targeted at something, like I have to, like I have to give it all, right? And that comes from low self-esteem. It comes from low self-esteem because I have to prove that I'm good enough, right? And yet that has led me here, <laughs> right? Um, that has led me here. 
so it's humbling because I, I I've <clears> seen <throat> a lot of uh you know I I've never been a, a, a person that has a whole lot of friends, right? But it's um you know it's humbling when you when you kids don't we don't talk to our kids as much anymore. They're grown. They live their own lives. They're they're they have their point of view, um, and they're they're well. They're, they're they're doing well, right? For all intents and purposes, we did our part. So that's another transition in which we are kind of like redefining who we are as people because we no longer are parents like that. We don't have that responsibility, and their careers are set. That they're doing what they're supposed to do, you know. Um, and there's solace in that because it feels good that the kid, your kids are productive members of society. But now that we're in, f- that I'm in flux career wise, not knowing, I know what I want, but not formulating it or doing it in the way that is less painful, <laughs> kind of like challenges at your core, you know, and you feel it in your body, you know, you feel like, oh my God, my finances are all over the place at the moment. But this is just not, what am I going to do? What is the next step, right? And being in that abyss and letting go <clears throat> to come up on the other side has been challenging. So with the intention of sharing, you know, the reason why I'm sharing all this is like right now at this particular period in time, my biggest challenge is just letting go, right? Letting go of those past limiting beliefs, letting go of the expectations that I feel warranted or not that people may have on me, letting go of all that and then be able to say, well, this is where I am. And as humbling as it is, as challenging as it is, this is where I am. This is where I would like to go. And even if I have to take detours, which I don't particularly want to, which is one of my fears right, of getting stuck on something that I don't really want to because I know what I really want and it it not being manifested, you know, is the fear of what will be my purpose of my life, of just doing a job just for the sake of earning money to maintain things, you know. So that's a real fear, and I think more than anything else, my fear is that, that idea of just settling and living an unauthentic life because circumstances <clears throat> and the environment dictate so, you know. Don't you think, though, that, because um, it's interesting that you're saying this, and, of course, um, behind the camera, you know, we talk about a lot of things and, and we share a lot of things, and we're being transparent now by sharing um, our current um, position on the hero's journey. Mm-hmm. And don't you think that, when you say it's not authentic to do that, why is it that you feel that it's not authentic? And I'm not doing this as a therapist. I'm just asking as your wife and Mm -hmm. your partner here, Mm -hmm. why is it that that has to be inauthentic when you're going out there and you're earning an honest living at a job? I'm not saying you, and there's no offense to this, but you're not going to go and work at a fast food restaurant And you're not going to be, you know, you don't want to work in corporate. You're going to go for a job that you're going to be like, okay, I can do this. This is reasonable. You know, this is along the lines of my experience and my training and things that I know and so on and so forth. So to some extent, it's going to be a job that fulfills certain aspects of whatever. But there's also the monetary fulfillment Mm -hmm. that allows you to then pursue all of the things that you want with our business, with a soul's quest and giving back to the community In that way, it allows us an opportunity then for um, travel, for eating out, for buying the things that we need, taking care of our cats, taking care of our home. Why, why is that inauthentic? Pride. Is that what you're trying to let? And and Mm self-esteem, right? Mm -hmm. It's again, this is one of the things that I'm, that I'm, I needing to let go of. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know? Um, because again, it's like, you don't understand. I, I, again, I recently just discovered this. Mm -hmm. I recently just did, you know, um, but no intents and purposes. Am I a failure in life? Mm -hmm. 
you know, we we did what the best that we could to to set up our kids for the future, mm -hmm. right? We did the best that we could. And for all intents and purposes, they're fine, right? Two are firefighters. One is in the Navy, right? Two of them own their homes, mm -hmm. right? Whether or not they choose not to interact with us as much, you know, it hurts us because we would like to have the family more together, but they're living their lives and they're set up in a way that, and I'm not saying that this boasting, I'm saying it because, you know, you want to hold on to that idea that your kids are going to look at you the same. I think primarily to me, them is what hurts me the most in the way that they look at me. Right. Um, but how do you know how they look at you? And I think that's a, so a thing that is mm -hmm. a, 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 it's prevalent for a lot of people because we assume Correct. that we know how people are looking at us and what they are thinking about us and what they feel about us. Mm -hmm. And what we think or what we assume isn't always accurate. And that goes to my point. Mm -hmm. So my point is that I've discovered it. And did you, I just discovered this within the last few weeks, really, mm -hmm. that a whole idea of how low mm -hmm. and how those limiting beliefs affect the way that I make choices. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, mm -hmm. that idea of abandonment, mm -hmm. that idea of actually wanting to be recognized as someone you know, to have a sense of belonging to something, mm -hmm. you know, to having a sense that is like, hey, I am somebody. Like, I haven't given that to myself. Mm -hmm. I've always been self-deprecating, you know, and, and anxious, you know, mm -hmm. and always <clears throat> feeling like I wasn't good enough. And then having people reinforce that, you know, and I let... Having people reinforce it, me allowing it for them to say it and not putting a stop to it. And people close to me, people that I worked with, you know, so all that stuff does, does have an effect. And again, it's like, it's, it's, there's, uh, the, there, there's not a victimization mentality that I'm getting at. It's the rea realization that I am the one that allowed it to happen. I wasn't responsible for the things that happened to me in terms of how people reacted, like my father abandoning the abuse and all that stuff that happened as a kid. And I, I wasn't responsible for all that. But have I forgiven all that stuff and I f forgave people for that? Absolutely. I'm still dealing with the repercussions of it up to this day because I'm making, I was making decisions of wanting to be this good person, wanting to give back. And I did. And I did it from a place of love and caring because I did. But now that I'm getting older and I and, and experience so much more, I had to change. I have to change that naive part. I have to die for that. It doesn't mean that I don't want to help people. It doesn't mean that I want I don't want to have a good heart. It doesn't mean any of that. It just means that I have to be more realistic as to how I go about helping people and empowering people, which is really what I would like, mm -hmm. right? And how to strike that balance in which I am giving, but I'm also receiving in sense of feeling good about the person that I am and not having attachment to it. Mm -hmm. Not having attachment to like a, a, a titles that never been anything, but having an attachment to like the purpose, but that idea of just being, you know? Mm -hmm. So that in and of itself, more than anything, and if you think about it, right, we we're talking about financial challenges that we're going through right now. And we're not even talking about that. We're talking about the emotional component or how it truly makes me feel or when it stems from. Yeah. You know? Because I think that the, the financial thing, like, you know, a lot of people might want to highlight that is, Oh, that, that defines you as an individual. Yeah. You don't have, you, you're the, you're in the have nots category. Right. And there's people but, that have said that. And to there us. are people who have said that to us and that's mm -hmm. cool. And it's great. Um, but really what we're talking about in terms of what we, our last episode was about the hero's journey and the pale blue dot and looking at things from the universal perspective and, and how finite life is and how um, granular we are yeah. in the grand scheme of, of, of the universe, life, our, our life, yeah, life, mm -hmm. um, our quest. And so what you're driving at 
while a lot of it and the, the purpose of this episode was to be transparent about the fact that we're also going through the journey. We're yes. going through the hero's journey. Yeah. Um, and that we have gone through a lot. We have, we're, we have had a lot of challenges and obstacles as a result of that and a lot of beatings and a lot of triumphs and a lot of um, realizations and a lot of death and rebirth. And that you're still struggling with that. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I know we, 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 this episode was about us. Um, but really this has been a lot of focus on what you're going through and how you've navigated what's happened to you personally mm-hmm. and how it's affected us as a couple and what, um, your realizations have been from this and what you're, you're gleaning from this whole process. Right. Yeah. Um, but I, and, and it is a lot more emotional. It's not about the finances. It's not about um, where we live. It's not about our kids. It's about how we process what we're going through yep. and what we're allowing to happen and not allowing to happen. Mm-hmm. And when we don't allow things to happen, and this is what I'm, I'm gaining or, or gathering from this, I almost want to watch The Power of Myth today because I feel <laughs> so like, you know, whatever, is that you have to, you don't, we're in that place where we talked about on our last episode about where you're either going to do it, you're going to, you're going to make the choice or the choice is going to be made for you. Correct. And I feel like you're in on both sides of that because you, there's a part of you that's making a choice, but there's also the part that's like thrusting you forward into doing something that you're just like not comfortable doing. And here's the thing, you know, the, the one thing that is prevalent and it's like, you know, I was talking to Fred because Fred is Fred is one of our one of my dearest friends, you know, and we talk almost every day. Good friend, um, mm-hmm. and to and both of us, actually. to both of us, mm-hmm. and and we go into that. So he was just recently rereading The Alchemist about all these different signs. He right? is. He was. Re- he just reread it. Oh, right? that's funny. So we have an upcoming episode that's going to be. On the it's going to have a little bit of the alchemist yeah. in it, yeah, because that's the hero's journey. It's true. In a nutshell, it's true. I mean, it was crazy. And yeah. and he's talking about. You know, we were talking about the signs mm. and the different signs. The omens. That, the omens, mm-hmm. right? And I love that book. Mm-hmm. And the one sign that keeps happening, and it's coming from different points of views, is letting go. Mm. For me. Mm-hmm. And as someone that has, that, that has uh, dealt with some trauma, right? that idea of letting go of control, mm-hmm. right? Our perceived control, right? Because we don't want to get hurt. Oh, I don't want to get hurt anymore. Or I don't want to feel this way anymore. Natural. Naturally, right? Naturally. It's like, <laughs> Natural. you know, fight or flight, you know, yeah. or, or, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. like, um, that, that idea of letting go is the re- recurring theme. It's come in the last few weeks very often. Mm-hmm. And, and it's the one thing and the fear is that the fear is like what happens if I let go what happens if I truly trust the universe to guide me and guide us what happens if I just do what I have to do which is you know make sure that I I do this, I do that, and let the outcome unveil itself. Right? That's the fear. Because then that means that I'm no longer in control. And those are like, you know, the little things, the little nuggets that you start realizing about yourself, about your controlling issues, about your... Or the, all those little parts that are deep ingrained in you, you know, that you are not truly aware of and kind of like, okay, let it, you know, um, and change it. So for a part, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's like, what do I do? And then it's like, let go and trust, you know, let go and trust not easy i that i don't know i mean not and it cuz we want to be in control yeah, you know cuz we want to we want to be the person who determines the outcome yes but at the end of the day uh, but but 
you know, and again, it's like some people say, well, that's silly because you got to control everything. And it's like, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know that if you can't. I tried <clears throat> for 45 years of my life. I tried to control the direction, you know, be a certain, be th- excuse me, where has that, it's led me here. So what happens when you let go and you connect more to, to the universe and connect more to, you know, to the, un- to, to, for there and and make and you know what happens mm. that's the unknown that's the that's the part that is really hard you know for for our, our logical mind for the way that we look at the world right now this is systemic way of thinking you know um how can you do that that's being irresponsible you know mm-hmm. uh, how do you do that you know, um, and that's a part that is like I'm struggling with. Like I'm struggling that week big time. It's like if I'm doing something and I'm not really liking and I'm just like, oh, my God, this is kind of embarrassing. This is like beneath me. This is something. Oh, my God, I could be I should have done this. I should have done that. I should have been I should have applied myself more in this. And it's like, but that wasn't the path that that life picked for you. And then people say, well, you got to pick your path and you got to do your, you know, you got to, you're, you're in control. You're in control of how you react to situations, but you're not in control of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, at any point life will throw a little monkey wrench into your situation and then what? Yeah. You know, and that's kind of like, um, and then that's where resilience and, and acceptance and letting go and Mm -hmm. all of those things come into play. And I think that those are daily challenges yeah. that and, are tough and you know it's like i i i don't envy people right like those people that have found their path and they try the true and path true and try methods you know um we work with a lot of those people that are this is their, their true true and tried method you know and i'm um, i'm happy that their their journey was sim- simpler and then they follow the outline and they and it was successful and it does work you know, if you're capable or if your heart follows <clears throat> the true and try path, you know, I, I don't I don't live in anybody's life, so I really can't tell, you know. Well, I would I would argue against that. I, I would no, push but, back on but, that. But, you know, not not now, but I would no, no, push no, no. back. I get on it. That. I get it. But it's it's it, it just wasn't my in my cards. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't. It, it wasn't in my heart. And the beautiful thing about the perspective of life is that is in the diversity of life and the diversity of perspectives that really makes life what it is. If we all we, if we were all thinking the same or being all the same, it will be not as a not as a not as a beautiful world because we all have different points of views, which is the beauty of it all. And I find it in working in certain environments that you have to have a certain point of view, you know, and and that doesn't really reflect what life is about. That's why some people are, that's why I was dissatisfied in those places. And I don't know about other people, whether or not they're dissatisfied, but when you have perspectives that are just so. Well, and I, so that's me- where mechanical, the, they're not appealing, but that's where the pushback comes at because um, one, one would argue and, and I, you know, some people might think, Oh, you're going to say that because he's your husband, but just from an observer of, of you and us, being an observer because I like to take that perspective sometimes of just being the observer of what's going on. Um, it takes a lot of courage to do the things that you have done. Um, you know, we started this business, um, in COVID, this was a COVID thing, you know, and, um, we've gone through a lot of things together with our children and, and, and on our own and whatnot. And you've gone through a lot of trials and challenges on the outside externally with other people and had a lot of friction and, mm-hmm. and have had great relationships with other people. But I would argue that the consciousness that you have about what you're going through and what you've experienced and, and even the enlightenment that you've come to and arrived to today, there are a lot of people that are living. They got the Facebook in life. They got in real life, Facebook. You know, it's like their life is about social media. What do I want to portray? What are the persona? We talk about that. Mm-hmm. But they've had to go through challenges too. And they've probably had to just accept that this is what I have to do. Or they're probably going through some serious struggles to maintain this facade, this Facebook persona that they want to put out there for everybody to look at. My life is perfect. Mm-hmm. And we're just not those people. 
we don't have a problem saying we're not perfect. We don't have a problem saying that we don't have the things that are important to us are not as important, you know, th- th- that are not. Yeah. And, um, and there's a lot, there's a lot of courage that comes with that. And so I would defy anybody to tell me that or to tell me otherwise, you know what yeah. I mean? Because I think that it takes a lot of courage to do the things that we do and to, to try to live an authentic and genuine life. You've never, ever steered away from that. No. And that, that's powerful. And I don't think that in a lot of ways that we give ourselves a lot of credit for that. And I'm talking about the collective, not just you and me mm -hmm. or just you, just the collective. We don't give ourselves enough of that. You know what I mean? You know, it's interesting because when I was doing the training last week, um, this same topic came up, Mm -hmm. uh, this topic, the idea of what you just said to me, it's so hard to take in and just say thank you. Yeah. I know. It's 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 you so struggle. hard. It's like I struggle with you, even you, because you 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 build me up a lot, right? It's like I I'm thankful for you. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm thankful for Fred, thankful for Mike, you know, thankful for my mom, extremely thankful for my mother. Um, she's always been there for us. Mm-hmm. I'm very thankful for my sister and Roly. Um, I'm thankful for those people. I'm thankful for Aristo. You mm-hmm. know, Anna. Um, a lot of my kids from the past that, that still reach out. Um, like, I'm thankful for all those things. And I take those things for granted, you know, um, because I'm so concerned about the, the negative things that have happened, you know. And I don't want to do that. And But just hearing you say that, it's, um, it feels, it, it's hard to say thank you. And it's hard to, 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 to recognize that you see me, right, as who I am, as I truly am. Um, and not as a loser, like some people might perceive me as, or or something like that, right? So I, um, that's something that I that I also had to learn, you know, to be able to accept those type of things. And it's um, it's been humbling, you know. Um, but I think that that learning this stuff. It does make you feel shitty about yourself. Like, man, why the fuck did it take me 45 years to learn this shit? <laughs> you know? Like, why, did it, that, why is it taking me all this time to accept that and see that and be like, oh, my God. Mm. Right? And like, and and now it's like, okay, well, I, I, I can't go back and I don't have anything else. It's like, well, what do I do now? And now I have to learn to let go? Mm-hmm. It's just some humbly shit. It's like humbling. It's like... <sighs> You feel like that tension in my chest. Like I feel that tension in the, you know, in my chest that is like, oh my God, what am I going to do? I exhausted all possibilities. What am I going to do? You know? So the one thing, just to kind of like start wrapping this up, um, that I've been kind of like working on is number one, I'm pretty clear. And this is something that happened within this year because this year has been a really interesting year. There's been a lot of things happening that happened in the eight months, Mm -hmm. right? And it's because it's been a big, 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 powerful transition time this past eight months. Mm -hmm. We thought that by this time you'll have like, you know, your ideal job, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we made the plans that is like, all right. You know, by 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 March, I should have my by my my job. It should be set, right? Like mm-hmm. we should be okay. Now you can step back and work on the Soul Squares full time. Like we had all these plans already put in place, mm-hmm. right? And it was like we're like, yeah, and but plans are speculative, right? And then here we are, eight months later, not there at all. Ex- like exhausting possibilities, right? Mm-hmm and and we were responsible and we did all our things and it's like and we got some help you know and it's like okay um and now is as if there's a big shift taking place right that could potentially be really good for us but then you you when you when you're going through it it's like i i personally feel that burning sensation right here 
in my chest. Like it manifests right here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fear, trepidation. So what I'm working on really is number one, I've worked on finding what my value system was. Like really, really dug deep into who I am as a person and what I really wanted. And that was, and now I'm, f I'm very clear about that. Mm -hmm. The second thing is long term. I know how we want to live. You know, I, I call it Labibo M, but with abundance, right? <laughs> with abundance. The, bo the bohemian. We want the bohemian lifestyle, but with, but with some money. <laughs> with some money, right? <laughs> you know. That's all we've ever wanted. That's all we ever wanted, right? And then the 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 other thing is um, empowering people, empowering others, um, which I think has always been like the theme of my life, you know. Um, I always, even when I, when it came to like empowering like teenagers, which nobody wants to do, you know, that was always been like a big theme. But I want to empower other people like that go through our stuff, right? Um, and I have an idea as to how we want I want that to look like. Um, but what I but so I have those two things, right? The other thing that I really and this is the part is like I have to be able to be like the in the bag of Gita, right? Let go of outcome. Mm -hmm. and that's letting go just do and let go and let the universe take care of the rest that part the acceptance the the letting go the the allowing part that's the part that i'm struggling with when it comes to all this so now that i have those and know who i am I know what I want, right? The struggle just being on the abyss is to let go, be dismembered, let go of all this stuff, right? Let go of all the the traumatic things. Let go of this idea of who I am or who I was, right? And go back just to be this is going to be the challenge well that's my challenge right now <sighs> so how does that sound how that's how is our unfolding quest part that's good i think that you know it's almost like one of our regular podcast episodes you know we kind of introduced a theme you shared from your heart you were very open mm -hmm. and then a few little tips and strategies about how you're actually or what you're implementing into your personal quest mm -hmm. to overcome this or, or not even overcome, but just to get through it. And yeah, I think in some ways to overcome. Okay. What about you? What about me? What about you and your quest unfolding? Oh, okay. So this is going to go on for much longer than I had anticipated. This is a, definitely a different type of episode. Yeah. We'll okay. split it in two. So my quest, um, so as you know, I didn't really want to talk about this today because I got a lot of things going on and I'm not necessarily feeling it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm being forced. So wow. um, <laughs> I'm wow. being forced. Okay. Um, but I think my quest is, you, and you touched on it a little bit, is, you know, I think that I remember there, there was one time when somebody had said to me, um, oh man, you're going to, your kids are moving out. You know, aren't you, aren't you nervous about like empty nest syndrome, you know, type thing. And we've talked about that in past episodes and whatever. And I was like, upset, empty nest. No, I'm glad to have my house to myself, you know, finally freedom, you know? And, um, now for me, the biggest, the, the things that these are, these are all my pain points in my life right now are that, Yes, our kids are grown. They're doing well. They're, um, you know, we, we've given them the tools and the resources and whatnot and help facilitate that process for them. Um, whether they choose to believe that or not, or even anybody else chooses that, that's what we've done in, in our hearts. We know that we're, we're at peace with that, right? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but I always wanted that family unit. I always wanted to do the whole Sunday dinners and have us um, be together and whatnot. And I remember somebody had said at one point, you just want us all to just kind of get along and be together and mm -hmm. stuff. And I was just like, what's wrong with that? Let me think about that for a second. Duh. Yeah, that is what I want. Who doesn't want that? Um, 
And so I think that that has been difficult for me. It's almost like mourning losses that, um, not, not to say that mourning a loss isn't difficult, but mourning a loss when there's really not a loss per se of an individual, you're mourning a loss Mm -hmm. and it's a change that you have to accept. And it's, it's another stage in life that you have to accept. And it's almost like, um, um, an, the, a whole nother cycle of, okay, now we're truly on our own. You know, our kids are living their lives. They kind of want to do their own thing separate from us, you know, and you kind of start to think, you know, what's wrong with us? Are we terrible people? Are yeah. we, you know, am, was, am I a bad mother? I went through so much to have my kids be close to me and be close to my children um, for them to just want to be away, you know, or choose to be away or choose other people Um in our absence and and for them by choice. Mm -hmm. Um, That's been difficult for me and it's been difficult to navigate my purpose because that naturally, you know, I I like to cook and have, you know, have them come over and, you know, game night and, you know, things like that and talk and catch up and things like that. And, and I keep saying things like that. That's a bad habit. It's okay. Um, (laughs) I've been told that things like that is a bad habit. You're sharing. (laughs) Yes. And so um, I think that's been difficult for me, um, mourning that loss. And then, you know, starting a Cole's, a, a Cole's quest, a soul's quest um, wasn't my choice. This isn't something that I would have done. <laughs> I feel like I'm always made to do things against my choice. Um, against your will? Against my will. Um, when you started it, this is like a, a, a big vision. Right. And I was just like, whatever. And you were like, Oh, and you're going to be the host and you're going to do this. And you're going to, and I'm like, that's not what, but I don't want to do that. You know, I didn't, I didn't see myself doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and while I get joy out of doing this as a collective and supporting your vision and your dream and what you would like to see realized, be realized. Um, I, and I think that's important. And I think I've been pretty, good about doing that I still have a vision for my own individual life and even though we're married and we're together and we share a life together we have individual lives that we live Mm -hmm. and that we have to be able to 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 do things that fulfill us personally Mm -hmm. and that has always been for me teaching and so this has been the greatest pain point for me because um I did everything that I was supposed to do. I've been in school um, for a long, long time. Um, You know, I I earned a terminal degree. You you know, that's not, people don't just earn terminal degrees every day. Um, And there was a lot of sweat, blood, and tears that went into doing that, literally. Um, And it took a lot of discipline. It took a lot of sacrifice. It took a lot of patience. It took a lot of waiting. It took a lot of um, putting aside my thoughts about how people were going to look at my ideas and, you know, all kinds of stuff. You know, even up until doing my dissertation, I came up with this idea (laughs) of using like animals to represent this and that. And when I think about it now, I'm sure my chair was like thinking, did she smoke some weed before she came to talk what like what is she thinking or is she drunk what's going on but it just I thought it was a great idea you know and it was like um <clears throat> you know so I've had to put my my pride aside to come to share these things and for somebody to say no no that's that's not how we're going to do this you know <laughs> um and the one thing throughout all of this when I got my master's degree in public administration I wanted to um I wanted to teach. I was hoping that I would have an opportunity to start teaching. And that was not um, possible for me. And that was hard for me. Like I remember getting that call and somebody saying, yeah, well, we can't, you know, we can't certify you to do that because of so on and so forth. And, you know. So, so in particular, there's this, there's um, a, your job Mm -hmm. and I just probably put it out, right. You know, they chose not to make you an exempt employee so that way you were able to teach. Right. My position is a non-exempt position. Mm-hmm. And so because I'm non-exempt, that means that I cannot teach because that is 
over time or considered over time. Yeah, but it, the, the XM thing is really truly at ar- arbitrary. It's so arbitrary because you can, you, could, you know, you people to. have had positions changed and in, in, in other organizations too. It's not just in ours. People Correct. get their positions changed. Yep. Um, and so I've put a lot of work and a lot of effort into my, my role. And I think that I'm a good employee. I'm loyal. I'm, I show up every day. I'm disciplined. I get work done. I've never been asked by any of my bosses if anything has not been done or where is this or, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm a good employee. And all I ever wanted was to teach. Mm-hmm. Like it's been in my heart since I started my master's degree. That's what I wanted to do. And I thought I'm in the perfect position because I'm, I'm in education. So I'm going to be able to get this experience and then I can teach. And then hopefully one of these days I could be a faculty member. I would love nothing more than to, to, to teach and give back knowledge that I have gotten throughout the years years and to learn from students and to learn from other people and engage with other people on this, in this dynamic, in this setting that is so different than, uh, it's sort of like what we're doing now. Mm-hmm. It's a setting that that allows for creativity, for authenticity, for for being yourself and sharing and and learning. Mm-hmm. And that didn't happen. Mm-hmm. So then I was like, okay, well, you know what? In order for me to teach, I'm gonna have to, you know, I I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go on and get my doctorate. Maybe if I'm a doctor, that will make the difference, right? And I went through. For almost four years of school, um, including my dissertation and whatnot, and I, I earned it. And that still hasn't happened mm-hmm. within my organization. And so you go through taking the organization out of it. What happens in those situations is, and what I have gone through is that you start to question your, your value. And you start to question your mostly your value. Like, do I, am I not valued by this organization? Do I not have what it takes to be a member of this organization in that capacity? All I want is to teach. That's all I want. I just want an opportunity. And I've, it's fallen on deaf ears. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And um, when I say deaf ears, I mean deaf ears. Like literally the person was just like, can you just remind me about what we talked about? You know, like that's, that's hurtful. Like I, I sunk into the ground when that happened because I was just like, you don't remember me coming to you and spilling my guts to you and telling you about how much I am this institution. I am this institution. Mm -hmm. I did everything I'm supposed to do. I went to school. I earned my degree. I I'm, I'm, I'm in the community. This is what we are. This is what we do. And, um, It just fell on deaf ears. And so you start to question your value and, and man, did I go through all this for nothing? Did I get a terminal degree and put us in, in hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and I have nothing to show for it? And that's where I'm at today. So I think that's been my biggest pain point because uh, you know, a lot of people have told me the job market's really tough because I've applied for jobs and, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who are going to really eat with this. I was like, okay, well, if my organization isn't going to value me, then I have to move on. I gotta, I can't stay here. I have to do something else with my life and, mm-hmm. and, and forge that path for me to be able to teach. So if I can get into a position that will allow me to teach, then I can actually pursue that dream because mm-hmm. I, at one point thought I was going to have to abandon that. And I refuse to abandon that. I I want to teach. Uh, It's not about the monetary aspect. It's not about that. The fulfillment for me is truly intrinsic. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Extrinsically, we need the the funds and and that would be great. And if it happens, great. Mm -hmm. But that's not my motivation. My motivation is... And we have a baseline as to where we want to be Mm -hmm. financially. Or where we need to be, yeah. Um, But I need that. To, to feel fulfilled in my life. I need that. It's like something that I, I, I need it. I need to it. To make an impact. I need it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and, and that's what I feel like my purpose is. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like I thrive in those, in those, um, you know, when I've done trainings for the, the, the students at, at the college and whatnot, I feel energy when I'm in front of a group, you know, and I feel more energy when I'm, when we're engaging together, when there's that dialogue together. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I don't like the, the, the traditional form of teaching 
be in the front. I'm the only one that's to, I like to engage yep. thoughts and perspectives and, and have a diverse, uh, you know, dialogue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's what sets me aside from a, a traditional instructor. You know what I mean? Is that I want that. And that's a different perspective, perhaps. Maybe it isn't, but it is in my mind. I think maybe that's what's wrong with me. Maybe that's not what's needed in, in, in the world or in, in, in universities and whatnot. But that's what I am. And mm-hmm. that's what I'm going to deliver if I were ever given that opportunity to, to showcase that. That is my perspective and that's what it's going to be. That's me living an authentic and genuine life. Correct. And I'm not going to detour from that. But I've questioned my value. I've questioned, and that has been my biggest, my biggest issue is questioning my worth yeah. and my value. And am I not enough? You know, and all those things are in the value category. Am I not enough? I'm not enough. People don't look at me as I'm enough. You know, I'm this Spanish girl that, 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 you know, is a nobody. I'm just an assistant and I'm, you know, that's all you are. That's all you're ever going to be, you know? And, and I feel like organizations try to put their thumb on you to hold you down from pursuing your dreams. And I just can't let that happen. You know, and so, but looking for work has been daunting and looking for another position that will allow me this freedom and the flexibility of teaching has been daunting because I have applied for well over 200 to 300 jobs, maybe even more. Mm -hmm. And I have gotten nothing but denials. So again, you go back to questioning your value. Like, my God, I got a terminal degree and I can't get a job. Like, what is this? What is a terminal degree? You know what I mean? What does that mean? What does is, what is being a doctor mean to people then? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? What is having that level of education and, 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 and experience and discipline and, and all the things that go into earning that degree? Why is that not valued? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And to the point where I've been like, maybe I should re- take that off of my resume. Maybe I shouldn't say that I am a doctor. But I work my ass off to become a doctor. And while I have no problem with people calling me Jesse and, and I'm very humbled about it. I don't, I don't go around and, and that's not the topic of conversation when I'm talking to people. Oh, by the way, I'm a doctor. Just so you know, I don't do that. You know, I jokingly have done that on our show here and whatnot. And, and yeah, there's some, some level of expertise that I have acquired with research and studying and whatnot that I'm proud of. And I'm not going to let anybody, it's like any kind of education. You can't take that away from an individual. I'm not going to let anybody rip that from me. Yeah. I've worked too hard for it. And yes, I am a doctor. And why would I not want to put that on my resume? Why would I not? Mm -hmm. Why would I not want to be proud of that? But I've gone back and forth on that because I've questioned my value. All of these things are going to go back to my value. Mm -hmm. Everything that I'm sharing goes back to my value and my worth. And I have been really down on myself about my worth. And my self-confidence and my self-esteem has taken a beating as a result of that. Mm -hmm. So now I'm getting emotional and this is what I didn't want to do. Thank you very much. And it's not funny. I'm not laughing. Okay. So it's, it's burdensome. It's, this has been, um, a very challenging time for me. And then of course, with all the things that you're going through and, you know, being let go from work and now the financial challenges, that just amplifies the, the, my situation. It's almost like having a magnifying glass on top of me. Cause you're like, Jesus Christ, you got a doctorate and you can't get a freaking job. Mm-hmm. Really? Come on now. Something's wrong with you. Like I've looked at myself in the mirror and been like, something is wrong with you. There's, there is something that you're not seeing that is not appreciated by these people. But how do, how can I say that when it's a piece of paper that is describing who I am, mm-hmm. you know, when I'm applying to a job, Um, but even feeling that way, not necessarily with the people that I immediately that I work with, because they all make me feel pretty, you know, special and, 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 you know, I feel valued by them, but it's the external people, you know, and, and, and the desire and the fact that I've vocalized my desire to Mm -hmm. want to teach for the same organization, you know? Um, and that's been really, really taxing. Mm -hmm. And like I said, very daunting and, and trying and just, I feel beat up. I feel really beat up. I feel beat up. And I'm, and I know I'm not the only person going through this, but you know what? 
I'm not worried about other people. I'm worried about me. It feels like the. It feels like it's just when me. it's you, when it's your world yeah. that is com- like, like because it's everybody not around everybody around me is doing fine. Yeah. So it's kind of like, so clearly there's something wrong with me. There's mm-hmm. got to be something wrong with me. You know what I mean? Um, there are people who apply for a job and boom, they get an interview and it's like they got the job and I'm like, what'd you do? Well, to, uh, what what did you do what what am i missing i've had my resume reviewed i've had it looked at i've had you look at it i've had other people look at it and they're like this is great you know and i'm like something's wrong with it either i'm overqualified or i'm not qualified enough and nobody's going to tell you yeah they just say while you were a, a you know a, 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 while you what do they say on the emails i get these denial emails daily several times a day um they say while you your 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 experience and whatever was really great, we found somebody else. Mm. Like okay, so it wasn't really that great because you found somebody else. <laughs> you know what I mean? So then I get people saying that it's very um um competitive competitive right now, and that there's you know with p- people are realizing they got to go back to work from the COVID thing, and there's a lot of different things to try to make me feel better, but it doesn't make me feel better. I still feel like shit. Mm-hmm. You know, I just do. And so I think that what I've had to do, um, cause I, I think that I look at myself as a resilient individual. I think that I'm pretty, um, that I bounce back from things. I mean, I've been through a lot, you know, in my life as well. Um, while I didn't have abandonment issues or anything like that, I've, um, you know, I've been homeless. Mm-hmm. I've been hungry. You know, I've, um, done things I'm not necessarily proud of to get by, you know, I didn't prostitute myself or do anything crazy, but you know, like that, which, you know, n- not to call anybody else out that has had to go to that extreme. Um, but you know, I've worked multiple jobs at the same time to make ends meet. You know, I, I did what I was supposed to do. Um, you know, I paid child support. I did all the, you know, I did all the right things. I, I fought for my children. I, I tried to be a good mom. Um, and all of those struggles have always made me bounce back. Mm -hmm. because I overcame them. So I was like, you know what? I'm a resilient person. I can get through this, you know, but it has been challenging Mm -hmm. because it feels like there's so much pressure right now for us to just, um, chart this course to fulfillment. Mm -hmm. I don't even say happiness, fulfillment, fulfillment. Yeah. Because I think that's where joy comes from is when Mm -hmm. you're fulfilled and I'm looking for joy in my life. And I think that I have not had that um, in a while. True, like, you know, I've had moments of happiness where I, you know, because, again, I'm, I'm, I'm resilient and I try to make the best out of situations. And, in fact, you had said the other day, you're just so resilient. You know, you just, you, this is where we're at and this is what's going on. But, you know, you just kind of, okay, it is what it is, you know. And I am like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's some times when I don't feel that way. You know, and I really question my 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 purpose and my you know what am I doing on this pale blue dot, hmm. and that really puts things into perspective, because I think about that, I think about that universal perspective, and I think, wow, you really are just a speck of dust on this planet. Mm. You know what I mean? But you know that that right there is is um, one of those things that I was talking about. I think in the previous episode as to when. And uh, um, what? How do I say it? That is a potential uh, realization based on that, right? So we talked about the the hedonistic, you know, YOLO, or you only one, just do whatever you want, right? Uh, power seeking, you know, helping others, and then nihilism is another one. It's like I'm nobody, so why am I even here? Right? right? Nothing matters. Nothing. Um, so I should just be gone, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So that is another point of view based on having that perspective, right? Mm -hmm. That, that is a reality of choosing, you know, because you can't deny the fact that it's like when things become overwhelmed and things become that desperate or or things become like, you know, you have a certain vision of what your life should be, Mm -hmm. that it doesn't turn out to be like that at all. You yeah. know, then, then what's the point? And that's a very, very relevant point. Now, 
obviously we don't prescribe that terminal solution. No, 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 and no. and I definitely but am it not is, in that it place. It is something. It is something to that 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 pops up in our minds in terms of. Of course, you question your purpose. Of questioning why am your I purpose. even here if I can't have fulfillment? Why am I even here? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If I'm not ever going to be in a classroom capacity, when I've given everything to this organization, and the only thing that I've asked for in return is to allow me to teach to yeah. gain experience. Okay, maybe I won't teach here full time, but at least allow me the opportunity to gain experience to teach somewhere else Mm -hmm. that you would think that that would be okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's do this for this person. So what does that teach you about, or what does that say to you about organizations? What does it say that, what does that say to you about loyalty to to um, other missions and other things that are outside of you. What does that say to you? Well, I think that what it says to me is that whenever, and this is going to be a very, very easy thing to say, and and people are going to be like, yeah, okay, well, whatever. I'm, I'm feeling you. I'm there. I've studied this. I get it. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to be able to, you know, we talk a lot about values, right? You have to be able to, get with an organization if that's what you're going to do you enter into that marriage or that relationship with an organization and that organization's values you know when you apply for a job you can look at the about us when that and they tell you this is what we're about this is what we do and you either prescribe to that or you don't Mm -hmm. that you know that sounds like it aligns with my values i've had to write some statements as to why, why do I want to be with this work? Why would I want to work mm-hmm. with this organization? Right. And the first thing that I say is the organization's mission and purpose align with my values. Yeah. And those are that, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, whatever aligns with that. Right. So I haven't applied for a job that hasn't spoken to that aspect of myself. Mm-hmm. And that is difficult for some people is like, we got to do whatever we got to do fast no, no, no. fast food is not my mission or my purpose or it might be some people's purpose but i gotta i need to work yeah you know what i mean and i get that mm-hmm. but there that sacrifice at at some point is going to bring you to that point where you got to make choices yeah and then it pushes that's that thing that we were talking about in our last episode about being forced you either make a decision or you're, you're forced to make a decision. Yeah. Right. Yep. And that's what happens. You were with these organizations or this organ overarching organization for many, many years. You mm-hmm. gave, 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 and gave, and gave. I have done the same. Yep. Right. But that mission and vision didn't serve your values anymore or, Correct. or, what was on paper, what was on, what was plastered everywhere. And I talk about this in my dissertation. What's plastered everywhere is not what the organization's really doing. Correct. Exactly. And when you finally, when that, when that shit surfaces and you realize that Mm -hmm. things start to crumble and things start to kind of get tumultuous and, and very challenging for you and starts to eat at you because you're like, Okay, but this is not what our vision is. This is not our mission. This is mm-hmm. not our purpose. But you're, we're doing this, and you want me to do it too. But this is the mission. This yep. is the purpose. Yep. And there's there's there's, there's the, the friction. Conflict. There's the conflict there's the because conflict, now yeah. you're like, well, I need the work. I need money. I gotta survive. I gotta yeah. maintain my lifestyle. Yes. But at what expense? And, and, and that and, that's when you start getting eaten up by these. They will swallow you up like a black hole. And this place will swallow you up. Like if you could see my face, people who are listening. And you know what, what the interesting do. thing is that there, that I've seen people that know, man, this is not the right. Like I have people tell me this. Mm-hmm but I got to do what I got to do. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's the issue. That's the thing that you see that, that we see in is like, you know, cause people will, you know, we always are looking for self-preservation and then, and it, you have actually literally had somebody say that to you. I recall, you know, uh, yeah. I recall you telling me and, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing now, but they literally say, hey, man, I gotta, I gotta support my family. Mm-hmm. I got a house and stuff to pay for. I gotta do what I gotta do. That's it. And so some people will sacrifice themselves to, Whatever that person's, because now we're talking about a person, not the the organization's values and missions and purpose, because they're not always living up to that. Mm-hmm. Outwardly, they might be achieving outcomes and goals, but the way that they're getting to that mm-hmm. is not 
if it doesn't align with your system, uh, but with your value system. I know, but it, but also, you know, to be the devil's advocate at the end of it all, right? It's 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 really about the individual choices, right? Because for instance, you you could look at some of the most heinous things that's happened in the world, right? You could think of like the Nazis and the 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 complacency about of people and knowing full well the things that were taking place, right? There's this aspect of us that is very cannibalistic in a, in a sense of, of, again, the perspective. When we look at the perspective and the different ways in which we could interpret that perspective of the pale blue dot, right? Some people are all about their, 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 their hedonistic pursuits, which is about, I, I need to take care of myself, I'm the priority and this and that. And, and then you have somebody like Frankel, for instance, that has that, that, that the humanistic perspective of someone that has been exposed to such a traumatic event, right? But it's all that. And all those choices and all the, the interpretations for that perspective all coexist all at the same time, right? So you and I have experienced all those things from different points of views, Right, and I think that what mostly what we want is to figure out a way in which we could live our interpretation of the pale blue dot perspective, right, in a way that gives us what we want mm -hmm. without violating the rights of other people. Exactly. You know, and ultimately, I think that's the that's the main that's the main thing. Um, and organizations are what they are, for better or worse, right? They're there to 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 a certain mission, yeah. For a certain and purpose. I want to I want to be really clear because mm -hmm. the organization that I work for, I love what it stands for. Yeah, it's it's higher education. You know, we cater to the community. We're located in a community where a lot of people may not be able to go to 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 mm -hmm. to get a degree. You know what I mean? And and the role that I play has been very pivotal in helping a lot of students and helping a lot of people to sort of navigate their path in their educational pursuit, mm -hmm. even my own. It, 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 it pushed me to do that, right? And, and while I'm an academic at heart, um, I know that there are other people who don't have an opportunity for that and, and nor, nor are they interested in being that, but they need it. Yeah. And we facilitate that and mm -hmm. i want to be a part of that bigger picture it may just be that i'm not going to be in that picture there yeah and that's okay that's what and i i've really reconciled that with the organization and i've given my my time there and i've done everything and if my time can go longer that would be wonderful and if it can't it's okay you know what i mean and that would be one of the things so I, not to bite off of yours or, or whatever, but to maybe piggyback, um, one of the things that has helped me through this process is the idea of letting go. Mm. And when I say letting go, I mean it in a couple of different areas, right? It's letting go of, because um, I talked about the kids and, 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 and where we are with them, letting go of the, 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 the idea that this is what our life is supposed to be like. We're supposed mm -hmm. to have Sunday dinners. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we're not. Maybe we're just meant to have Sunday dinners together. Correct. Just you and me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Which we had a delicious one last night. Which we did have a delicious one last night. Mm -hmm. Good job. High five on that. Yeah. Um, let's not make anybody mouth water because it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, letting go of that idea, letting go of these ideas of what things are these supposed to be like expectations. Yeah. And once when I let go of expectations, um, like just recently we made a decision that that's a pretty big decision in our mm -hmm. life that I'm not going to share right now. No. And um, in the moment I was just like, oh man, really? I was bummed. I was like, wow, this is, in fact, I, I was, I cried. I was emotional about it because mm -hmm. I was like, man, you know, this is, this is where we're at. Mm -hmm. And like literally that was in the morning. At the end of the day, I was like complete 180, mm -hmm. like a complete 180. Like, you know what? This is going to be great. It's a new opportunity. That speaks to my resilience that I'm yep. sure you're talking about when you refer to that. Um, but it also is the idea of letting go of things. Yes. And, and people yep. letting go and not having that expectation that this is how my life is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And so therefore having that strategy or tip or in my you know my resource my toolbox mm -hmm. pulling that out when i need it has really been helpful for me 
Yeah. You know, it helped, it has helped me in the past. And when I reflect on my challenges and, and, and the obstacles that I've gone through and being homeless and it's allowed me to have really beautiful experiences, you know what I mean? And, and I've been able to meet people, you know, when, when I did my exodus from Florida and I went to Colorado, I met people in Colorado that were really good to me, Mm -hmm. you know, and then I met people who weren't so good to me Mm -hmm. and, but it was an opportunity for Mm -hmm. me. And I had a lot of opportunities as a result of that. And it really molded me as an individual Mm -hmm. because before that I was naive. I was scared of, of, of my, my family and scared of what people were going to think in it. And I would say it was courageous for me to pick up and just leave because not people, I mean, the way that I did it was maybe not as whatever, but that's what it was. It is what it is. And it made me who I am. Yeah. And I became a very strong individual for that. Mm-hmm. To the point where I've had to finesse that because I've been like, I can, I can be very defensive and fight for my, my shit. Mm-hmm. I fight for myself. Right. Um, and I've, and again, I've had to, I've had to, you know, slow down a little bit. Sl- 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 that's what you want to tell me. Slow down a little bit. I've had to like, you know, um, finesse it. I've had yeah. to, I've had to really work on that because, you know, it's okay to be assertive, but it's not okay to be ugly assertive no, yeah you know what i mean yeah, yeah. um i don't know if i'm going off on a tangent but basically you know that that's one of my 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 resources that i use is is the idea of letting go and my resilience has allowed me to sort of okay right now this would be my number two my number two would be okay right now i don't feel good mm-hmm. i don't feel good about where i'm at i don't i have i'm feeling low i don't feel confident i don't feel worthy i don't feel valued i don't feel all that and i have rather than forcing myself to get out of it because i have to because that's what everybody's expecting from me yeah i have been able to step back and go you know what time out i need this is what i was trying to do with you this morning time out i don't i need some time but you force me anyways but i've been able to say no 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 i need to sit here with this right right now yeah i need to sit with it yes i need to soak it in i need to allow it to go through my my body i need i need to i need to feel it i need to feel the hurt the pain the the pressure i need to go through this and when i'm ready to come out i'll come as like the um men are from or women are from mars or men men are are from from mars Mars and women are from venus Venus. when my wave is crashing don't desperately try to get to that thing and jump on the the board to get yourself out of the water, but experience that crash. Yep. You know, in, it's interesting that you mentioned that because that's one of the things that I've been doing is like, um, um, and this is like, you have to confront it, mm-hmm. right? Those feelings of inferiority, the feelings of failure. Mm-hmm. You gotta like, like that pain of it all. Mm-hmm. You gotta feel it. You got to kind of like just go through it and let it see because then afterwards it's kind of like the soothing feeling yeah, that comes afterwards, like mm-hmm. an acceptance mm-hmm. it's, of it. It's like going through the storm. Yes. And then all of a sudden the sun kind of comes through. And then you can breathe, you know, yeah. and then it's like, and, 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 and you feel it on, on temporary moments, right? Like you have to just feel that and then, um, breathe it in, breathe it out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that it's the same thing with the current state that we're in, right? We have to just go through it, mm-hmm. feel the emotions on the micro in those moments, feel those emotions, and just go through those emotions, mm-hmm. and then consequently the big picture will actually begin to change as well. Mm-hmm. And then you could actually have that <sighs> things become more clear, become more because in those moments when I when I do that, when I'm in those moments where I feel like like when I feel like shit. Mm-hmm. I have been like, I can't be here. I'm not allowed to do this. I'm not, I, I've got to be strong. I just sit with it now. Yes. And I, I take opportunities to, if I just feel like watching TV, I just do it and I don't feel guilty. I used to feel guilty. I, you know what? I'm just going to sit and watch mm-hmm. TV. I don't want to do anything else. Take a bath, write in my journal, mm-hmm. um, you know, do things that I want to do. You know what I mean? Um, but sit with it yeah. and let it, let it, let it soak in. And that has been, that in and of itself has been a transformation for me because I've been like, it's okay to be here mm-hmm. just because, you know, there, the, nobody has an expectation on you, but you, yeah, you know? And so, and it's true because again, it's like that part of being alone, right. That, um, it's cause you, 
you know, we had some people say some things to us that, oh, you're always going to be poor. You're always mm-hmm. going to be this. You're going to be that. Um, you have people saying things it's like, oh, what you're going to do is just go and deliver newspapers or you're like, you're nobody or whatever. Um, we al- Like, we always had people talk about me. and pr- You know, I mean, you told me things. I like, mean, people just say things about you just because. And mm-hmm. it's like, I don't understand it. Mm-hmm. Um, and... You know, and you and you hold on to that stuff, and 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 a lot. One of the things that I have to learn is like it's not necessarily about you, um, and it's not necessarily about you know. It's people just see you in whatever way that they want to see you, and well, it's not up to you. And I would argue that sometimes they see themselves that way, so they got to project it onto other people, and they have to project it. Yeah. But again, it's like there's you 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 know I held things in, um, for a while because about but it doesn't look necessarily about me, Mm -hmm. you know? And it's like accepting those realities and accepting that and then being, letting, letting go of it. It's, it's, um, it's a hard thing. It's a hard thing, you know? And, and you gotta not hold grudges and not hold anything negative in your heart. And which is really hard to do, but you gotta just really just let it go. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to kind of like let it go. And then I would say that that, that would bring me to like that number three. Mm -hmm. Go ahead though. No, 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 go ahead. No, my, so my number three, because we can't, you know, go on forever, is that, um, so the first one was, you know, what was the first one? The, the one. <laughs> Going of, through so many emotions No, here. no, no, go ahead. But the second one was uh, sitting in it. Yeah. And then the third one is that, is committing mm-hmm. to my resilience. Yeah. Committing to, okay, I, I went through it. My wave crashed. I'm here. No. All right. I accept it. This is what I am. This is what it is. This is what it's going to be. That's all right. It's another day. Next. Yeah. You know what I mean? What's my next? Mm-hmm. And so, and and making actions, making purposeful actions to move forward. You know what I mean? And yeah. there are some things going on for us that are going to be, they, they seem to some people like, oh man, really? It and I'm like- really looking at it like a lot of this stuff as opportunity. The way that I see it for growth, the way that I see it is like taking a step back to maybe take two, three, three Mm -hmm. steps forward. Exactly. You know, and that's kind of like, and as hard as it may sound Mm -hmm. and uh, as it is, you Mm -hmm. know, um, that's kind of like the way that I see it, you know? And Um, that's exactly, that's exactly what it is, is all right. So, you know, decisions that we're going to be making and that we're going to be going through soon, um, doesn't feel Sometimes it doesn't feel, I, f- I look at it now with a breath of fresh air, mm-hmm. but to some people it's like, oh man, that's bad. You have to go through that. I don't even look at it like that. Yeah. And that's not the way that I'm going to be sharing that when it's time to share it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sharing it as this is a great opportunity for us because yes. it is, it is, it is. Mm-hmm. And the beautiful thing about it, um, is that we're doing it together. You know, and I was, I'm glad that you said that because there's a lot of positive things that have come up out of that, right? We've met, we have some good friends. Mm-hmm. Very few. <laughs> I Very mentioned them, right? Mm-hmm. I said Fred, Mike, Marty, my mom, right? Mm-hmm. That's like pretty much the core of who we really mm-hmm. uh, talk to on a regular basis, mm-hmm. you know, and we appreciate them and we love them for, for, for the support, you know, um, that they give us on a regular basis, right? Um, we have met Cindy, uh, who's been a great help. You know, she's been our, our coach mm-hmm. through through a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Your sister, she's always no, been I said, a good that, friend. Oh, did you oh, say Maria? I said Marie, my my mm-hmm. sister Marty. Um, uh, and and those, you know, Cindy and, and and all that stuff like helped us kind of like create perspective and saying that our vision and our and our and what we're looking to do is something that is valuable and uh, you know and, and to say something to the extent is like. Hey, Omar, it's like, man, you're like the teacher of life or say, you know, people are just not ready for you. They haven't been ready for you. And and, and saying those things is kind of like uplifting and, and, and feels feels good to hear that from other people, you know, um, sharing circumstances. But primarily the fact that you and I are are clear in our collective vision and also in our individual vision. Mm-hmm. And we're there to support each other when it comes to that. It's, it's a journey that uh, some people don't have the fortune mm-hmm. to do it collectively with someone. Exactly. Right. Uh, unfortunately for whatever reasons. And in this world that is very silly, you know, people, there's people out there that talk about, Oh, I need to have this type of a person and this type of a person and this, and I have to make this money and those, you know, and the silliness that people get caught up when you go all that. It's, it's for me, 
I'm so thankful that we are going through this, that I'm not going through this all by myself. And I do feel shame in the fact that as a man, right, in the traditional sense, should be taken care of, of, of you. Um, and, you know, but that, that, you know, it's like, oh, man. But also at the same token, I'm, I'm so thankful for the fact that you are independent and then you want what you want and that you um, take care of me and I take care of you and we're doing this collectively. We are, um, that's something that I'm so thankful for that um, because it's kind of like the part that keeps us moving, you know, in spite of everything or everyone, even in our, close not close close area but in the in the sphere in our within our sphere that doubt us that have put us down that that question whether or not whatever right um i'm glad that i'm sharing this quest with you and i'm thankful for that me too so what's next for us what do you mean What's about what? What's next? What is the quest? Um, what is the unfolding quest that's in store for us? Are we sharing that? Oh, I don't know. No, no, no. I'm just. I don't really know. I know that we have some visions of what we would like to see, but I think that. I don't think I'm ready to share what we're doing yet. Okay. Um, I think that's for another episode. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I, I think we need to keep that close right now because you know nothing's concrete. No, no, no. So I'd rather share when it's it's been done, and when then we done. can experience. You can share the experience of going of it. through it and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think that also the 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 unfolding of of what we envision and the unfolding of the things that are going to happen. We had a we had a little bit of a taste in the last few weeks of 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 the potential of what we want to do, right? Of what we're trying to share. Um, we've seen a little bit of that potential, so we'll see how that unfolds as we continue to work towards, you know, manifesting our our our, our desires and manifesting our our perspective mm -hmm. and sharing that perspective. Yep.